放，但系而家已经逐渐旺盛起嚟啦。到咗一九八四年嘅时候，呢一度会成为一个高楼大厦林立嘅新市镇。七八十年代，香港經濟起飛，人口亦都多咗好多，市區用地越嚟越少，政府於是就決定開發新嘅土地，興建公共房屋。新開發嘅公共屋邨喺設計上邊必須引入城市規劃嘅概念，令到居民喺民生、社區同埋康樂設施嘅需求都可以滿足，令到大家安居樂業。香港一個咁細嘅地方。要令到每個人都能夠安居，真係談何容易？好難想像當時咁少人做到個咁大嘅項目出嚟。咁華富嗰陣時咧，我依人呢冇到我自己，佢誒呢個呢、這個。嗰啲 rise rise 啊，啲電電纜上面上邊，係我走去同誒聽，同佢一齊設，坐喺度同佢設計。呢度係屋宇建設委員會籌辦嘅華富村。Completed in 1967, Wanfu Estate was the first housing estate to introduce the concept of town centre. It was designed by Liao Pun Huai. 華富村咧，我哋而家都諗住重建嘅，嗰、那個地點真係好好噶，喺個山上邊望住個海，仲要係港島區嘅一個屋村。嗱，當時咧都有人話交通遠啊，出入冇咁方便，但係而家睇翻咧就好到不得了啦。華富村嗰陣時咧，我就話幾年有咁大咧，即係差唔多喺英國嗰啲 New Town， 即係個 concept New Town。即係新市鎮嘅個概念啊！但係人哋人哋大把土地啊嘛，咁起市中心啊咩啊？咁華富村就喺馬尼醫院同埋香港仔嘅中中間喺度，巴士站都冇。係係。咁我知啦，都要發展啦。嗰陣時我自己又又要理埋誒中華巴士，開始整一條線咧，就朝頭早翻工嘅時佢就派做咯。遠遠地嘅係停車場，停車場啦。咁啊，又又係華富村係頭一個起公共停車場啊，一個兩個三個唔知喺喺度。嗯，咁嗰陣時咧，啲人開始有有私家車啊嘛，咁啊走去塞曬啲啲馬路，啲舊扶舊扶車啊，冚唔到啊。咁所以我趕走咗嘅，要俾錢就起啦。咁順便喺呢個停車場嘅屋頂咧做遊樂遊樂場啊！呢啲 playground 喺度，多啲 playground。細路仔遊樂場啦Wangfu Estate was completed in five phases. The initial phase Wangfu One Estate was completed from November 1967 to February 1969. Wangfu Two Estate was completed later, from 1970 to 1971. Later additions of Wa Choi House and Wa King House also completed in 1978. Wangfu Estate was the first housing estate to introduce the concept of community, with shops, car parks, a bus terminus, and various community recreational facilities 
making it a self-sufficient community. Yeah, so有一些社福教育设施其实全部都是跟这个主宰是相通的而且也有一个叫做有爱的行人通道连通的所以你在里面其实不用担心都可以搭车 the development of Wafu Estate was a new concept in public housing development at that time and laid foundation for subsequent development of new towns, which became the blueprint for the future development of housing estates. In the 1970s, Hong Kong's public housing development entered a new phase. In 1971, Sumari Maklahose took office as the governor of Hong Kong and paid special attention to the housing problem. During his second year in office, the government announced an unprecedented 10-year housing program to build public housing for the people. So當時,你好,你都有提出了一件事,他意識到如果我們不解決好這個房問題,其實必定會造成市民和政府的磨擦。
。咁同埋咧就係嗰陣時已經係即係市區已經係地方地咧就已經係滿曬啦。咁所以嗰陣時就要去拓展呢個嘅新界，就做呢個新市鎮嘅。同埋另外一個好重要的一樣嘢咧，就係話即係將所有係有關於房誒公共房屋建設嘅咧嘅部門歸納埋一個嘅誒機構咁樣，咁依個就係我哋現在熟悉嘅香港房屋委員會啦。During the 1950s and 60s, the government set up various departments to deal with the housing problem arising from the needs of housing and urban development. In the 1970s, Hong Kong's economy took off, but the demand for public housing was still very urgent. Ah,就所有嘅政府嘅公共房屋嘅嘅建設合併咗一個一路。啊，就係嗰時開始。合併咗，所以就又使自治部署嘅嘅職責同埋屋宇建設委員會嘅職責就合併咗一路。咁我就
，又可以方便佢哋可以去遷移入呢啲新嘅發展區或者新市鎮嗰度咧，即、就、係、是、一方面佢又可以喺嗰度住。個方，另外咧就喺嗰度誒工作啊，咁諸如此類，就唔使話即係逼曬喺個即係喺個市中心啊，連香港即係嗰啲即係擠迫嘅地方啊，咁啊，即係居住環境亦都有有改善啊咁啊。By 1976, the government decided to implement the home ownership scheme to enable lower middle income families and public rental housing tenants to buy their own homes. 我哋即係公屋。已經行咗一段時間啦，開始咧市民咧嗰啲收入咧慢慢有啲改善，咁尤其有部分即係喺誒住緊公屋嗰啲居民咧，佢都好想誒擁有自己嘅物業，咁所以嗰陣時候誒政府都成立一個嗰啲即係專責嘅小組嚟睇呢個問題，即係話係咪淨係誒不斷就提供一啲出租單位？就解決住屋咧，咁但係問題亦都睇得到咧，就話誒可唔可以另外咧，就對嗰啲即係誒收入比較上穩定啲，即係嗰啲誒中產人士又好，或者等等問題佢咧，佢哋都係買唔即係負擔唔起呢個私樓嘅，但係俾佢有個機會咧，能夠即係上到一個一個叫做即係房屋階梯，可以擁有自己物業咧咁。In 1978, flats in six courts were offered for sale under the first phase of the home ownership scheme. To speed up this program, the government invited the private sector to take part. In 1979, the first flats built under the private sector participation scheme were put up for sale. In 1980, Shunqi Court, the first home ownership scheme flat in Kuntong, was completed. Just to turn back the clock, 嗰、那個影響就喺邊度咧？就係話點樣去可以令到嗰個所謂房屋階梯能夠完善得到？房屋階梯咧，我哋就係話一一部分有資助，一部分係冇資助。即係所謂資助咧，就係話誒嗰啲家庭咧根本係負擔唔起去買。私人樓嘅政府就諗辦法，點樣能夠即係幫到依啲家庭做到業主咧咁。另外一一個誒、呃、類別咧就話誒嗰啲佢誒早幾年咧啊，即係已經係入住咗公屋嘅。咁誒，但係入住咗之後咧誒個家庭嘅嘅經濟情況咧就改善咗啦。佢哋就想誒，不如我哋就唔住呢啲出租單位，就想有機會咧就做即係買一啲居屋。咁嗰類咧就誒政府咧係係好鼓勵添。咁所以咧佢哋係有有啲所以即係誒優先嘅。即係優先嘅時候就話咧，佢用綠表申請啦嚇，即係話綠表呢啲住户，佢就申請咗之後咧，佢就如果買到嗰個居屋。個單位咧，佢就要退翻佢住緊嗰個公屋出嚟，就俾嗰啲即係輪候差啦，或者更更加有需要嗰啲家庭，咁啊變咗咧，佢嗰個所謂個房屋階梯咧，就可以即係叫做完善咗啦。In the early 1980s, the economy was booming, together with population growth. The population of Hong Kong had by then exceeded 5.1 million. And the number of people living in public housing estates under the housing authority had already reached two million. Owing to various reasons, the 10-year housing program was extended by another five years. By 1987, the government had built flats for 1.5 million people, but was still unable to meet demand for housing arising from the increase in population. 到到八七年嘅時候咧，就有一個誒長遠房屋策略一個檢討啊，就望一望究竟應該係點樣做向前看係最適當咧咁。咁於是就有呢一個誒一九八七年長遠房屋策略，就將一個思維咧有少少改變咗嘅，係由一個係供應去帶動嘅一個誒房屋市場咧，就轉變為一個咧係由市場主導嘅市場。咁睇房屋嚟講咧，包括係出租
嘅一啲係資助嘅房屋啦，另外有啲就係出售嘅資助房屋啦，即係居屋。另外一類呢，就係私人市場嘅房屋，咁係睇幾樣嘢，同埋向前估算究竟點樣做呢係最理想呢，係有呢一個改變嘅。In 1987, the government launched the long-term housing strategy, stating that apart from continuing to provide public rental housing, it would also provide home ownership assistance to enable public housing tenants who could afford it and lower middle-income families to purchase their own homes. Y制造的需要。這個是世界上需要的。我們覺得這個組合是使到每個居住單位 In 1997, the government of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region was established and announced a housing program with the aim of achieving a 70% home ownership rate within 10 years. 90年代,香港已經發展成為一個國際大都會。市民對於生活質素的要求也大大提高。要滿足市民對優質住屋的期望,政府的挑戰也不斷提升。